throwback to what the artisans did back in the 1800s with the Montgolfier balloon. Because that not, was sewn together, but there were artisans actually painting the artwork around the balloon. So it was really just a combination of, of uh, skills that came together for me and the joy of creating the artwork and sharing it with my clients. As a child in Brooklyn, New York, Coney Island, I used to look at the funny papers and Mayor LaGuardia used to read them to us. And by looking at the Prince Valiant cartoons, I used to try to copy them. And that's partly how I fell in love with them. So we moved from, after my dad uh, got out of the service in 45, we lived for a short time in Albuquerque where he was transferred out of the 8th Air Force. So we lived there for a year or so and then moved on to California, to Los Angeles, where I went to junior high school and to high school. All our graduating class would receive scholarships to go to different art schools, Chenard Art Center. And with that training, that's what I did. I got a scholarship to Chenard. And after uh, high school and college, I joined the 11th Airborne Division, went to Germany as a paratrooper after training at Fort Campbell. I brought my wife and my, our two daughters were born in Augsburg, Germany. But uh, the affinity for jumping from planes and looking at the parachutes, when you come back and you view the hot air balloons, it's the same feeling. You look up and you have that shoot over you. And when you look at a hot air balloon, when you look up the, the Nomex up on the top there, uh, you have that same feeling. Went back to uh, California, and I got a uh, apprentice position at Pacific Outdoor in California. My friends that I went to high school with, several of them worked there. So went to visit with the art directors. They liked my artwork. Of course, while I was in the service in Germany, I did some sketching and different artwork, studied with a uh, artist there in Augsburg. But anyway, I got hired there and we practiced for apprentice for almost four years working in black and white. We had two Italian art directors that were schooled in Italy and they would do marvelous portraits and landscapes. So we were trained to do that back in the late 50s and the early 60s to paint these large billboards with really articulate brushman stroke. We were what we called pictorial artists. And in that term, painting large scales fitted my psyche. What it was, you had lifts, stages that you would ride on, like an elevator, go up and down, left to right, to go through a board, because a billboard at that time would be 40 feet long. And so the building was just huge. And then after we moved from, uh, we moved from California to uh, Minneapolis, and I worked for Negley Outdoor. They hired me. Negley Outdoor really wanted expertise in their artwork. And so working for them for several years, and then one day, Mr. Matt Whitaker from Whitaker Balloons came to visit the art directors. He wanted to have a reproduction of the Golden Grames package, cereal package. And so he asked the art directors and they came down to me because they knew I did different side projects, ballet backdrops, different things of that sort. So I looked at what his project was and said, oh my gosh, hot air balloons? That sounds interesting. So several weeks later, I went over to Matt's Balloon Port in Lakeland, and I created and painted the first really pictorial art on a hot air balloon. Before that, most of the artwork was sewn in different sections, you know. So this was really 
painting on a hot air balloon. And in doing that, it took me a couple of weeks to do it. But I, all of a sudden, I just fell in love with it. I thought, oh my gosh, this would be a wonderful career, something really different to pursue. Because I could relate to the hot air balloons, to the parachutes. And I thought, oh my God, this is just terrific. So from that project led to me starting my company called Sky High Art. And one project led to another. It was Tony the Tiger hot air balloon. It was a McDonald's balloon. It was a carousel balloon for Chauncey Dunn. One project led to another. I opened a studio in Minnetonka, Minnesota at the industrial warehouse. And that's where I started the first uh, painting, a large painting on the hot air balloons. The Red Baron's Balloon Club built me an easel that was 20 foot high and 30 feet wide. And what I did in exchange for them building the easel, I painted a Red Baron's hot air balloon logo for them on their balloon. And they loved it, so we have been friends for the last 35 years. But then I found six acres in Chanhassen, Minnesota with a barn and an old house on there. Well, what we did, I bought the property to six acres and refurbished the barn into a studio. We had the top floor, redid the roof, insulated it, put in just a drywall and just made a marvelous studio out of it. And then downstairs where they had the cows, the stanchions, we filled all that in made that into a big sewing room. Frida Oberg operated that down there. She had cutting tables, sewing machines, so we had quite a wonderful operation for painting the hot air balloons. And after the balloons were painted from the easel, we'd take them down, the pilots would come out, and we'd go into the field and inflate it, and it was like opening night. Sometimes the owners would come when we were the initial inflations. Otherwise, sometimes they'd come to visit afterward. But we would inflate them to see how it looked because you could never see it on the easel. You'd only see sections of it. And never had the pilots. We had Ed Chapman, Steve Sinnon. Uh, we had Don Picard, Gary Bernard Boren, and my son Tim. Uh, inflate them, and never once did we had a, uh, a searing or a burning of the balloons. So we are very, very thankful for that. The individual clients, they would have a theme. I'll, I'll give you an idea, like Chauncey Dunn, where I produced the carousel. He said, Charlie, I really would like to have a balloon with carousel horses. And I said, wow, that sounds interesting because I love carousels and, and the uh, horses and the, and the uh, carousels that were produced years ago were carved. There were some outstanding carousel carvers that were really artisans, like at the Coney Island uh, carousel and then also at the Minneapolis fair. So what I would do is make a sketch and give him a basic idea of what I thought the carousel should look like with the horses and then above the horses where you'd have these fine little paintings the different scenery on them and with the different uh, cartoon characters on top of the horses and so I would give him that layout and then we'd make a model balloon Frida Olberg would make a model balloon about four foot tall and we would take that balloon and sketch out the design on there, and then send it back to him and let him see if he would approve it. So when he said, by gosh, this is exactly what I want. So then take it in, drape it over the easel, and I'd have all my sketches. But I would take hundreds of photographs of different horses to explain the carousel, go around to the different carousels that are in our area, and then go through the different uh, periodicals of books and the history of carousel painting and take different horses and pick them out. And then the photographs I would take myself, we'd make transparency to them. 
And then so that's what I would use on my lift. I had a hefty Herman lift that could go up to 20 feet and you'd stand there and drive it left to right. But you put that on there with a light box and then I'd have all my colors mixed from the mixing room and have them on the lift. And that was my, my tool for going up and down left to right on the fabric. The last custom of my balloon was Amadeus, the Baroque balloon. That was for my customer in Germany, and also we had a uh, office in Fresno. That was Harold Biederman. I had just finished the Voyager balloon for him that we flew over in Germany, took up the Visa River. What Saturn, what uh, Voyager 2 had done on the outer planets, We'd put Mars, Venus, and the different planets on there. But after that project, then he wanted something Baroque, a very, that kind of a style. So that took many months to do, but what it did was, I had my son Paul, a photographer, and the commercial work he does, and took hundreds of photographs of my daughter Lori, my son-in-law's, and my son Chris, who took photos to make a really Baroque looking design where you had the uh, angels, the cherubs, figures, and pillars to really make it a, the feeling of a Baroque, very ornate painting. And the uh, uh, flowers underneath it took uh, photos of uh, different marble at the museum and also the Minneapolis Institute of Arts. And the city hall has some marvelous marble cabin columns. And doing the Amadeus, Harold, the big, wonderful German industrialist, you know, precise. Charlie, how long would it take? Oh, three months, I can have it. Well, won't you know, exactly at the end of three months, calling up, well, I want my balloon, send it out. And Sue, who I was working with, called him, said to him, Charlie won't be done for another three months. And he just couldn't believe it. And lo and behold, he came out to visit. And when he looked at the amount of artwork and the detail, he could understand it. But a lot of clients did not understand the amount of work it really took to produce that. But once they understood it, there was never a problem. When it's done, it's done. It's like your children. I have 10 children. If you'd ask me, Charles, which is your favorite? I would say, they're all my favorites. It just might be that one may take just a little bit longer to mature or take a little more time to work with. That's the only difference, you love them all. No one else has done it to the extent that I had. And I think the reason for that is the combination of me doing large graphics, intricate graphics, on the old style billboards, and then being able to transfer it, plus the fact of being a paratrooper where you love the fabric and you love that over your head, just the feeling of that combination really made me unique in what I did. Every client had a different point of view, but they really believed in what they wanted to express. And that really gave me joy to do it.